There is one very small island that stands out in the elite world of Major League Baseball, a place called Curacao. It's a tiny island off the coast of Venezuela with a population of just 150,000 that has managed to produce five current big leaguers and over 30 players in the minor leagues, the most players per capita of any country in the world. Curacao is not a typical baseball island. Unlike the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, or Cuba, poverty, proximity, or politics do not play a role in the influx of talent to the major leagues. Curacao is one of the richest and best educated countries in the region. Why is it the new red hot source of American baseball? We went there to find out. In January, the weather is perfect on the Caribbean island of Curacao. Perfect for the beach and perfect for the tourists exploring the capital city of Willemstad. Its pastel colored old world architecture and Dutch street signs make it look like a tropical Amsterdam. Curacao is a cosmopolitan center of commerce, but just outside of the city, some of the island's most valuable exports are also hard at work. Show time, show time. Here at Tio Dao Ballpark, about 30 major and minor leaguers from Curacao have gathered for their regular off-season workout with Hensley Bam Bam Mullins. Uh -huh. People kind of knew that I had this gift kind of to, to teach and to give back and to make people around me better. Teaching them, correcting their flaws, um, so that when they have to compete, they can do it a little easier. You guys have got more players per capita in the major leagues and minor leagues than any other country. Why? Well, I can tell you this. There is a big love for the game here. And the other thing is, there is no urgency to leave the island because of necessity, having to take care of the entire family. None of these guys are in that situation. And uh, that's helpful because? They don't have to rush off the island to go get it. The ones that leave and the ones that go is because they know they're ready to go and they're ready to make an impact. Curacao players are certainly making an impact in the major leagues. Angelton Simmons is a two-time Gold Glove winning shortstop for the Atlanta Braves. Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher Kenley Jansen is one of the best closers in the game. Jonathan Scope is the power-hitting second baseman of the Baltimore Orioles. In the wind column. Texas Rangers infielder Jurickson Profar was a top prospect in baseball in 2012 and is rehabbing a shoulder injury this year. My drive, caught by Didi. And Didi Gregorius has stepped in for Derek Jeter as the new starting shortstop of the New York Yankees. Gregorius and his peers come back home to the island every winter instead of training in Florida or California because of Bam Bam Mullins. He brings all this stuff that he used with all the guys from the Giants during the season and he helps us here with the same thing too. So if you can learn from him, that makes you really good. Nicknamed Bam Bam because of the prodigious home runs he hit as a kid, Mullins is the hitting coach for the San Francisco Giants. But here he is a legend. In 1989, Mullins became the first major leaguer from Curacao when he broke in with the Yankees. What was the experience like at the major league level? You know, as much as I was boosted in the minor leagues as being one of the top prospects and being a blue chipper, my career was not long in the major league level because I never hit my stride. But what Mullins couldn't do, he decided to teach. After a 12-year journeyman career that took him from the big leagues to Japan and Korea, he worked his way up as a major league coach, winning three World Series rings in the last five years with the Giants. Oh, did he? For the last decade, he has also used his experience to groom the next generation of Curacao ball players. I have this wealth of information. I can't keep it inside of me. It's no good. So look at all these kids. They don't know what it's like to go through a system and make it to the big leagues and be successful. They have no idea. So somebody's going to have to help them ease that route. The route to the major leagues starts very early in Curacao at the age of three or four. But unlike in the Dominican Republic where all 30 major league teams have professional academies to evaluate millions of kids, the Curacao system is all grassroots. And for most kids, it starts with one man, Frank Curiel. If you want to be a big leaguer tomorrow of playing in the major league, you have to work hard 
Every day, you have to ruin, you have to listen, you have to try to do what I say. Attaque! Curiel is a no-nonsense youth coach known as the grandfather of Curacao baseball. He started training kids in 1971. It's here at his ballpark where the tough love begins. Every day, parents drop off their kids and stick around to see the progress. Mr. Curiel, you were saying kids can't come here with what on? With watch. No watches? No. No ring on that. No earrings? No. No necklaces? No. no. You want the uniform to be yes. clean and neat? Yes. Now, you know a lot of players today, they love to have the jewelry. Yes. When, when, when they sign for the big leagues. When they sign for the big leagues, but not here in the little leagues. <laughs> I understand that. Is that discipline? That hard work ethic, does that explain why the Little League program here is so successful? Yes, because I start to learn the kids the basic. The basics? Yes. Curacao is seven times smaller than Rhode Island with a tenth of its population. It was settled by the Dutch in 1634 and is still an independent territory of the Kingdom of the Netherlands today. Baseball came to the island after 1918 when Curacao built a refinery to service oil from neighboring Venezuela. The oil brought an economic boom and lots of foreign workers in the 1940s and 50s who played baseball. The result? A $5 billion economy and a multicultural population of blacks, Hispanics, Europeans, and Native Indians who love the game and speak several languages in addition to the local dialect, Papiamento. Some of your young men speak three, four, maybe even five languages. Well, first of all, I gotta tell you, we gotta thank the Dutch system that, um, that makes it mandatory for us to take Spanish and English since fifth grade in school here. Fifth grade? Yes, and then you have to take them all throughout school uh, and pass them. Uh, and also at the same time you learn in Dutch because most of us we get brought up speaking Papiamento when we were born. Mulins says some Hispanic players can get held back from the majors because of struggles speaking English. But for us we don't have that problem so being able to speak the languages and not have that language barrier as you get in the States has been huge for our guys. Anytime a scout says to us he's following a player from Curacao and he likes him I light up because I know the quality of the kids who come out of that nation and the kind of baseball they play and what they bring with them, not only physically, but intellectually as well. John Sherholz is the president of the Atlanta Braves. He struck gold in the 1990s when one of his scouts in Curacao discovered a future superstar, Andrew Jones. He still marvels at the eclectic qualities of the island. What did you see when you went to see Andrew Jones? I saw in Willemstead a mix of European culture, island culture, a very bright and energetic people who spoke four or five languages, and Andrew did. And I was just so taken by their energy, their alertness, their brightness, and, and the willingness to uh, be engaged fully in whatever it is they were doing. It was remarkable to me. Bam Bam Mullins opened the door to the majors, but Andrew Jones kicked it wide open for Curacao. The former Braves center fielder burst onto the scene at age 19 in 1996 when he hit two home runs in a World Series game. Andrew Jones! Considered one of the best defensive players of all time, he won 10 consecutive gold gloves, made five all-star teams, and hit over 430 home runs in a 17-year career. Today, he lives in suburban Atlanta, where we spend some time with him. John Sherholtz tells us he couldn't wait until you turned 16 mm -hmm. to get you signed. How did that make you feel back then? I was happy. I think that's every little boy dream, you know, to play professional baseball. You know, signing a contract and go to the United States is big, but the, the obligation from when you get there is so big. It's unbelievable. I mean, you go from a little island to a big country. So what is it about Curacao that has produced more major league players? <laughs> It's a tough question. I don't know. You know, it's just guys wanted to play. You know, they grew up wanted to play that game. And the Simmons, Didi Gregorius, all these other guys that are up in the major league right now, all those kids watching them on TV and they say, well, you know, I can do that too. I want to do that too. And all those kids that you mentioned now and others 
or watching you <laughs> wanting to be like you has to make you feel pretty doggone good. Well, I'm, pr I'm proud of all of them. You know, I'm proud of all those kids that, that, that watch them play. You know, I, I remember, you know, all of them made it to the Little League World Series and all idolized me and say, who's your favorite players? Andrew Jones, Andrew Jones. The Little League World Series. I'm going to show you some profile. My favorite is Andrew Jones. 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 By 2000, every kid in Curacao wanted to be like Andrew Jones. Soon, Curacao became a Little League World Series powerhouse. The tiny island has made the big tournament in Pennsylvania in 10 of the last 15 years. In 2004, Curacao became the first and only Caribbean team to win it all. Round ball. Let the party begin in Curacao. Two kids from that team are in the major leagues today. Jerickson Profar of the Rangers and Jonathan Scope of the Orioles. And Jonathan Scope with a terrific play. John Schurholtz loves the Curacao pipeline. He feels his current shortstop, Angelton Simmons, could be a superstar, just like Andrew Jones. This man was a magician at shortstop for us at the major leagues last year. He would go backhand the ball, he'd catch it, he'd fall down and sit on his butt and throw a guy out at first base. And the stretch, what a play! Angelton Simmons could do that. He's bright, he's intelligent, he knows, he wants to succeed, he's committed to that, he's got that great work ethic. So you guys may well have struck gold again. We think so. Mm -hmm. Striking gold twice is not a bad thing. In 2014, the Braves signed Simmons to a seven-year, $58 million deal. As you might suspect, his role model is Andrew Jones. He was a standard that everybody wanted to get to. So this is a dream come true for you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. For me, being a fan since I was a kid and actually getting drafted by the Braves, I didn't, I didn't see it coming. And it's, it's a dream come true. You said it. When the New York Yankees went looking for a replacement for the great Derek Jeter, they settled on another Curacao kid, Simmons's childhood friend, Didi Gregorius. Former assistant general manager Billy Epler says the decision was obvious. A number of things that Didi has on his side, his age. His athleticism, his aptitude, his drive, those are a lot of ingredients to be pretty good in this game and to play a lot.